Welcome back to the Mojo Podcast with me, Richard Stokes. I hope you're doing great, whatever life is currently throwing at you. And it just seems to keep coming, right? I mean, what a year. If it's any consolation, all this stuff we're going through is going to equal growth, however bleak it might seem right now. Just as Sophie True, my guest last time round, uh, talked about as we discussed the post-traumatic growth she experienced after beating cancer. Thank you all for your feedback on that episode. Now, two of the many things I love about doing this podcast are also life lessons for me as I develop and grow. Firstly, there are the incredible people I get to talk to. Most I've never met and may only have a vague connection with. Now, the old me would never have had the vulnerability uh, to approach perfect strangers and ask them for their time. I mean, what would they think of me? But I've discovered people are super generous and I've learned that asking is okay. And secondly, that whilst I may have a view on the content that we might cover in the podcast, invariably, there's always a new angle that I didn't necessarily see coming. And for me, learning to adapt and go with the flow is another major learning of doing the podcast. And this episode is a case in point on both those learnings. I've never properly met my guest today, but I asked him to join anyway, and he jumped in straight away with passion and purpose, as he does with everything. And then I thought we'd talk solely about one particular topic, and well, wouldn't you know it, we've covered loads more. Now there is a theme, and it's all around being yourself, how we can change, how we develop, how we morph, and how we grow as people. Mark Shaler is a proper multi-hyphenate with a fascinating career history. He runs a sustainable innovation consultancy called Ape. He co-founded the Do Lectures. He's a coach and trainer, avid music fan, daily Qigonger, father and grandfather. As I said, we haven't met properly in real life, but I saw him present at an event called Shine in London a few years ago, and he made a huge impression on me that day due to his charisma and his honesty and his style of how he presented. That led me to his Instagram page where he shares all of this and much, much more. Yes, it's all really impressive stuff, but the real mojo magic in here is Mark's awareness of the changes he's been through. In our conversation, he reveals why and when those changes have happened and what helped him to really be himself. It's a beautifully honest conversation. We talk about big shifts in life, grieving potential, losing friends, building community, creating new things, his daily Qigong class on Instagram. We talk about how he helps people present better and they can do this when they are truly themselves up there on that scary stage. He says, don't be a character, be yourself. You can't forget your lines when you talk about your life. It's very, very true. There's also a delicious metaphor about cooking aubergines that will leave you salivating towards the end. Lots of links for you in the show notes to find out more about Mark his businesses, uh, his book, Do Present, which I highly recommend, and of course his very public Instagram page where you can check out his daily Qigong and see what it does for you. Remember, feedback is a gift, so please do leave a five-star rating and an honest review on Apple Podcasts. It all helps more people discover the Mojo Podcast. Now over to the Mojo Conversation with Mark Shaler. So hello, welcome back to the Mojo Podcast. I'm delighted to have my guest today, Mark Shaler, joining us from Aspie de la Zouche, right in the heart of England. We were just saying it's almost where four counties right in the middle of England meet. Mark, how are you doing today? I'm really good, actually. Yeah, it, start, it started off well, went a bit downhill, and now I'm feeling great. Wow, that sounds like a bit of Mojo oscillation going on for you today. What's, what's totally. been happening? <laughs> well, I started, I mean, I get up really early at the moment. It's my birthday yesterday, right? So, so I, I have a later night than normal, but not a crazy late night. And then um, yeah. getting up at half five this morning was, was, um, was my normal thing. Going out for a walk, that sets me up. If I, there's nothing that a walk doesn't improve. So we, I, so mm. we normally get out really early, get back for like 7.30. And then I run a Qigong class at eight o'clock on Instagram. And I felt great after that. But I've just been flooded with work. And if I'm honest, that's a really great thing. But at the same time, it's just a lot to think about. And so that's where my mojo kind of dipped for the, for the day. Um, and, now, and now it's back up again. And what's helped it come back up? Is it sort of just getting on top of some of that work? 
making some plans. I think it's perspective. Yeah, I think it's perspective. Like it's 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 seeing it's seeing the timeline for some of that work. I've started to write down the um, the things I have to do tomorrow just before I go to bed, and it's been really useful in terms of clearing the mind for sleep. And just kind of getting that stuff. I'm, I'm not. I'm not sat there in bed or laying there in bed thinking, "Is there something I've forgotten?" I've written it down. There's nothing that I've forgotten. And I had a bit of that. So I had an hour in the last hour where I just started to, to you know, kind of plan what I'm, what I'm doing next week. It's been very useful. Great. So just a, a classic bit of just forward planning. Write it down. Get it down on a piece of paper. You find really helps. As soon as it's out of my head, it's less worrying. Always. When I talk about mojo. And this 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 concept, this word, what is what's coming up for you when when we when you think about that that word? Uh, it, well, it, it's kind of like mojo for me is it's kind of this in, in, internal confidence, this internal energy. It's we're going to come on to this again later. It's my chi. It's, it's how it's how strong I feel. I don't mean in a in a kind of like you know, nasty masculine only kind of way. I just mean, yeah, am I, am I feeling it? Am I in my element, my flow? These words are often used and poorly mm. explained. Um, but how me am I feeling on naught to 100? And, you know, when I'm above Ooh. 80, then I'm feeling really me and I'm a mojo's good, right? When it's at 99, 100, boom, unstoppable. And if I'm below 50, then I got, well, if I'm probably below 60, then I've got like a, I've got a mojo issue. I've got a mojo crisis going on. Right, right. I love the fact that for you, it's 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 measurable. Almost, you can see it as, as you say, from the zero to a hundred measure of of me. And totally. what does or Let's talk about that. What does that being me mean to you? Well, I mean, I've not thought this through, so I'm making it up as I go along. But uh, not making it up. I'm I am riffing. So when I'm at my best, I don't doubt me i don't doubt my decisions i don't doubt my gut instinct it's just i'm just on it and everything feels great and and that's when i feel my, my most self when i'm not a hundred percent certain of of, of of my confidence or, or of me then that's when things get a little out of sync mojo wise and i'm just i'm just left thinking yeah but where's um where, where's mark because i can't see him today all mm. i can see is this kind of you know slightly nervy or slightly um what's the word kind of like half half powered person or three-quarter powered person and so bring in bring in the full me to the table or the room that's when my mojo is up, is at my highest and it's interesting i've not actually thought about it as a scale until i started speaking earlier but i'm tracking my heart rate variability at the moment um which is a a, a kind of it's a kind of measure of health, measure of, of, of um, immune health. And it's also really useful to track about whether you can or can't train today. So it's kind of got this, um, right. gives you, you can get a score where well, you get, you get a score that, that if you're below sort of 30, then your body's probably really struggling with some stuff. And if it's above 50, then you're feeling pretty strong. And so it's interesting, although I hadn't associated the two, as I was chatting to you at the beginning, I'm thinking, God, this is like my HRV. This is like my heart rate variability. I'm, I, I can see this. I can see this on a scale. And that's where that conversation came from. Love it. So almost like this real mojo variability of just knowing this is where I am right now. And if I'm at that, as you say, that, that lovely spot of 80, 90, 100, unstoppable, as you say, can do anything. Exactly. But if you're noticing you're below that, what what if when you do notice that? Given what you what you do, you're, you're you know very um, public. You're doing a lot of speaking. Um, yeah. Confidence is probably super important, I imagine, to a lot of what you're doing. If you're noticing on any given day that you've really dipped, what can you do? Oh, that's a great question. So um, that is a brilliant question, actually. So as a as a you know amongst the other things that I do when I speak publicly, I. I know if it's going to be go well or, or poorly before I even step on the stage, mm. because because I'm, I'm either feeling like up, like mojo or high, HRV good, or I'm feeling a little bit deflated, little little less buoyant, and I know how it's going to go down. Now sometimes, because I'm an introvert, 
I'm an introvert who hides in the spotlight. I, I, I like I like the stage because because it's a great place to hide. That sounds ridiculous, but it's true for me. And um, and I can sometimes pet my myself, my mojo up a little bit by um, by being on stage. If I'm if I'm if I'm feeling that you know I wasn't feeling so great before I got here, but as soon as I step out and you get like a response and your the stuff you're talking about, which is stuff that really matters, starts to go down well and you can see people coming with you, then that reinforces and builds and that's that's when it gets really interesting. Got it. So you're almost if you're Mojo, your energy might be a bit low at start, but if if you know if a few things land well, and, we'll, and we might come on to talk about you know landing presentations really well in a minute, but you're feeling that energy coming back from the audience. That's that's lifting you up. Totally, yeah. So you're you're, you're, you're that's a really again, so that's a great launching place to talk about this. So your mojo, your confidence, your self uh, perception is um, often a reflection of other people. It shouldn't be, right? And we can talk about this when we come on to the Qigong stuff, which is all about understanding that you are not a reflection of somebody else or your reflection is not then reflected by somebody else back to you. I came across a great a, a great thought the other day, slash, it's a line, but I'm going to get the line wrong. You are not what you think you are. You are not what you think people you are what you think people think you are. And there's just so many things in there that my kind of head, my head screwed a little bit. But that whole idea that you become the person that you think people think you are, that's really interesting. And But we're very close to that in terms of what I was just saying then. We're very close to that. And if I can see people warm to my message, then I automatically feel better about myself. Now, in an ideal world, and and the way that I'm working on myself right now is to be isolated from that need and to feel great about myself, whether anybody agrees or not. And and Mm. that's where I'm headed. That's where I'm I'm trying to transcend to. Um, That's much easier to say than it is to do. Well, I was going to say that sounds like that sound. Well, I, you know, I'm going to say it. it sounds like a journey. It sounds like a mission <laughs> that you're on. This is not. This is not an overnight decision. And then flick the switch. This. This is going to take some time. Exactly. Well, it, it, and it has. You know, I mean, I, my journey's been really interesting. I'm fifty to fifty two yesterday, and the last <laughs> the last five years, the last four years, my mojo has been really high. I've been feeling great. The four years before that, it was utterly dreadful. Maybe even six years before that, I was really struggling. And the 10 Mm. years before that, when I ran ran a a, a little eco-design agency, it was pretty good, you know? Um, There was a really sticky patch in the middle of all that. And um, and, and it's it's allowed to change because because I'm not the same person, Richard, that I was Mm. two minutes ago, let alone two years ago. And I'm really happy to say goodbye to that person, to say goodbye um, and, and grieve or mourn for that person. We often mourn more or grieve more for the people that we thought we were going to be but never became than we were for the people that we, that we were and we're happy to move away from. Yes. I know, yeah, so that sense of um, potential not fulfilled perhaps it, is something that we, we might grieve a concept. We never even had it, but we might have. Well, we, we, you're absolutely right. We, we probably, I mean, both of those things. So we may grieve the thing that we were and aren't anymore. Most commonly, we grieve the thing that we wanted to be, never achieved. We, we, we did something else, maybe even better. But in our head, that, that, that there's, a, there's a real, um, there's, a, there's a personification of the dream of the person that we were. And we grieve the loss of that as commonly as we grieve the change that, we, that, we, that we've gone through. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I see that. Yeah, lots of close friends have opened up to me about exactly that sort of thing, you know, if if only and what might have been and all these things that, uh, you know, you completely understand it, but they are so heavy as concepts and they you can literally see it on people's shoulders, you know what I mean? Weighing people down, holding them back, that sense. It's, it's exactly that. And we, we, have, we have such high aspirations for our performance no for our happiness for our, our joy and that's bolstered and um 
lifted, influenced by the joy we see others apparently having on, on, on all forms of, of media and on all levels of life. Mm. And comparison, comparison is the theft of happiness. And yet we happily compare in order to lose our own happiness. It's a really interesting, it's a really interesting world at the moment. And trying to move beyond me, me, you know, looking at others and wanting to be more whatever, to have even, to have more whatever, is really interesting. And, and, and envy can be a motivator. But on the whole, mm. I, think it's, I think it's a thief. Yeah. Comparison, the theft of happiness. Oh, I love that. I mean, I don't, I don't love the concept. I, lo- I love that, yes, exactly. You've, you've put it into such a takeawayable and understandable um, phrase. And in terms of, you know, you're talking a lot here about, you know, obviously a lot of self-awareness, a lot of working on self, a reflection of, you know, you know where your mojo is in the last 24 hours and in the last 24 years. Was the, where, yeah. where, what, was the, what was the point for you where, you know, whatever point you were in life that you thought, I need to do things a bit differently? You know, the way things are panning out, and you say that maybe that was one potential mark that went in one direction, but I need to do something a bit different here. Was, was there a point like that? Yeah, there was. I can remember it so clearly. It was, um, I was in Margate. Um, I was sat in our camper van in the rain on the summer holiday. And, and we'd, had, we'd had, you know, we'd had a few tough years. I'd been in a business partnership with another, with a, with a branding agency, for want of another word, who were you know, great at branding, but, rubbish at being in partnerships with people not just me many other people but you only learn that the hard way and um and, and financially we were, we were pretty buggered and and we, we've been caravan camper vanning got four kids two dogs a camper van and a drive away awning and we've been doing that for the last three or four years we, we'd go up and have a week mm-hmm. in or two weeks in northumberland and then we'd go and have a week down in margate i'm the guy that spotted margate booming 10 years ago in <laughs> Should buy here, um, and then every year when it was definitely booming. I was, I was absolute. I took the joy in being right, not being, not being wealthy, and um, uh, and we went for this one year, and it was particularly difficult financially. And I remember the rain coming down, and it filled. It's the only year it's ever we had bad weather during that during our east coast, north south east coast um, holiday, and. Um, we had to abandon camp. We had to leave the awning, drive away, get an Airbnb in Margate. Um, as I, when I opened the awning door, the water came out. Um, and we we were skint. And the kids all went, Nick said, oh, my wife said, I'll take the kids to the cinema. And, and I did have the money to go to the cinema, but I was just feeling flipping sorry for myself. And I thought, I'm not going to go. I don't, I'm, I'm going to sit in the car, sit in the camper van. And I sat in the camper van on the seafront at the... At, at, um, at Margate and just cried and just just sat there thinking what what is going on here and essentially I was trying too hard Richard and I sat there and thought about all the companies I'm you know I'm an environmental and, and innovation consultant amongst other things and I, I sat and thought about all the companies that I really really wanted to wanted to work with and um I thought yeah and I listed them all in my head and I thought yeah thing is None of them need me. <laughs> the thing is, the thing is that they're, they're all fine, right? The thing is, I need to go and work with the companies that really need me. And they may not be the companies that um, I would align with in terms of like a, a strategy or, or, a, or a philosophy of growth. Right. Um, and that was that turning point. And I, and I just went, right. So, and, and it, came, it kind of came on the back a couple of years before that or a year before that, maybe. Do you know, I actually don't know what I did this thing, though. I went on, uh, on, a, on a weekend called the Mankind Project, New Warrior Training, which sounds dreadful, utterly brilliant, best thing I've ever, right. ever done. Best right. thing. I wish, I wish I'd done it 10 years before. Um, and there were other, other people doing similar things, right? But I went on this incredible weekend, and, and stuff, had, you know, stuff had shifted for me, but it hadn't percolated through. So those two things combined... Those two experiences made me um, made me just shift what I did, and all that changed, Richard. I didn't do anything differently. All that changed is I changed how I thought about myself. That's all that changed. Uh, okay. I, I looked at myself not as 
a victim who was always hard done to and always struggling because other people were taking advantage. I just went, right, yeah. And there was one more change, actually, which had that happened maybe two years after that. Things had been going well. And um, I, had, I had a couple of different tangential business partners, really, really good people, one of which was a class as my, my best friend at the time. Um, and within, within the same week, uh, like set on subsequent days, on, on consecutive days, um, they both went, yeah, don't want to work with you anymore. And one of them had a really good, one of the, yeah, it's gone, man, it's, this stuff happens, right? And one of them was, was really, he just wanted to do his own thing and that's absolutely fine. And, and we, we get on really well. He's, he's yeah. a really good man. And, and it, was a, it was a nice way to end something. The other yeah. one, the other one can't do confrontation. <laughs> the other one just didn't bother telling me. Just, just, I just found out through other people and, uh, and, then, and then wouldn't talk to me. And still hasn't. So, you know, two years later, three years, three years later, still hasn't. You got ghosted by a best friend and business partner. Oh, yeah. my word. Yeah, and still am being. And, and that, that's, his, that's his way, right? And, and I'm kind of, you know, I've been very bruised by that. But uh, over time, you just think, it's not about me. That, 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 this is all about him. This is, this is, he's triggered by my success and, and therefore has to, he liked me small. He liked me when I needed him uh-huh. and when I needed help to grow. And then when I changed and was doing really well, he didn't like that role. He liked, he liked the other mark. And, um, and it took me a couple of years, honestly, it took me a couple of years to see that. And I'm cool with it all now. And every chat, once a year, twice a year, once a year in person, once a year on the phone. It's not easy. It's not what it was. I actually miss my mate. I don't miss anything else. Mm, yeah, um, but 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 those those three things, and they weren't all together because, as you rightly said, this is a journey, mm. and they, you know, when when you pull away the people that were going to help you kind of grow more, then well, there is only you. There is only you. But be really, you know, it's, it's interesting actually. Something happened yesterday that was really quite magical. It was my birthday yesterday, as I say, and I got a message from one of those two men, the one that ended it well. Yes. And, um, and he just said, it's, a, it's amazing to see what you do and how you do it now. You're absolutely on fire, and I, and I am really thrilled for you. Hmm. And the other one didn't get in touch on my birthday. Didn't get in touch. No. Yes. His missus did, but his wife did, but um, he didn't. It's, like, really? it's it, it is funny how, and you say it's not, it's, it's, this is not, this is not all men. This is, this is, you know, this is uh, one guy, a character type, but I, I think it is often men just really struggle with that, that honest, open emotion. That's, um, a, that's a great question that is, and, um, or an observation and, not all men are like this. Like they, 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 no, they, this this no. guy is, is is unique, right? He's he's a genius. He's an absolute genius. I miss him dearly, right? But he he can't do this stuff, hmm. and um and that's okay. I, I just need to leave him do his stuff, and and I do my stuff. It's all good, right? I think as men we are, on the whole, pretty crap at um at yielding to this stuff, at expressing ourselves. Um, but I think we're getting better at it. Yeah, I, I agree. I think when we were allowed to be, you know, in the same room with friends and we could touch each other, you know, most of my friends, you know, we, we hug it out. Mm. We, might even, we might even plant a kiss on a cheek. Whereas, you know, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, it had been a firm handshake. Um, and thank God for that. I mean, just one demonstration of um, e- expressing, you know, love, uh, compassion. Um, and we, we need more of that. Yeah, well, exactly. And, and it's, it is interesting. I think this period that we've just been through is, um, well, we've removed connection even more. I think we are being, um, I think there's a permission inherent within that to seek connection without shame, without embarrassment. Um. So I, I, you know, there are many positive things that have come out of this, this situation and there are many, many negative ones. But I genuinely think that the whole ability to reconnect with people 
that's going to be that is a permission that's going to be a really a real positive mm, mm. and i'm really i'm really pleased you make that segue to this kind of area because what i wanted to talk about was with you specifically is is around community and you know as a, and as obser- an observer of what you're you're doing and you 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 live I'd say very publicly through through Instagram very honestly very openly and you're talking about lots of things that are going on for you and I think my observation is you 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 have really doubled down and built community um during during this time and you talked a little bit about the Qigong and I'd love to jump into a bit of that now so what what drove that in again when you you, you had some choices here you've got a business to look after you know a, a lovely family but you really wanted to build community. Yeah, exactly. And 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 the in, it's, it is. It's absolutely it's absolutely fascinating that you know on day on the on the day of the announcement of lockdown, I just went, oh, bugger. And I knew I was going to lose all my work, right? But I knew we'd have an amazing year. We'd had an, an absolutely incredible two years, and so I knew we'd be okay. And we didn't get any government support, but I, I knew we'd be all right. Um, mm. And I thought, well, okay, well, what can I do? Well, I can't work in the same way because um, because there is no, you know, most of my work relied on getting lots of people into the same room for for an event or, or a workshop, right? And, yeah, yeah. And, and, and that had gone. So what can I do? Um, I thought, well, I'll miss, what will I miss? I'll miss going to London. I'll miss getting a train down to London, which is t- t- three times a week. Um, I miss swanking around Soho, meeting people who I didn't have to meet for work, but potentially would be interesting. But I'll really miss that. I'll miss inspiration. I'll miss performance. I'll miss standing on a stage and being able to perform because that's when I think best. Yeah. Some people, when they, when, they, when, they, when they get a post-it note and a magic marker and they smell that solvent, they're like, yes, I'm fired up and ready to go. It's Pavlovian, right? For me, yeah. when, I'm, when I'm presenting, I have my best ideas. And that is bonkers because it's really hard to remember them. But um, I thought I'm going to I'm going to miss this. Yeah. So I thought, okay, well, what I'm going to do, I am going to um, I'm going to do what makes me feel good. And and I I've always done a little bit. Well, for the last 10, 11 years, I've been doing the qigong classes of a guy called mm. Lee Holden on mm. um, on on the internet on YouTube. And um, and I met him last year, and I really enjoyed his company. But I really in- I really enjoyed the class and I thought I might train one day. I might train as a Qigong teacher because it always makes me feel better. So I thought, right, well, it makes me feel better. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do Qigong in the morning and I'm going to put the camera on me and I'm going to put it on, what was it at that point? Everything's changed with Instagram. It was, well, Instagram Live, but the way it saves has changed. Um, I'll put it on Instagram Live and I had seven people join me that morning, three of which lived in my house. So, so... (laughs) I know. So I I didn't have too many people join me from outside of my house. Um, And it just grew and it grew and it got to, well, now, I mean, even now when we're beginning to filter back to work, I had 70 on this morning. And I was there, I was there briefly. Oh, brilliant. I popped in. in. It now, and and it fluctuates. So you, you you know, sometimes it's 60, sometimes it's 70. Occasionally it's been at 100, 120. Mm. But over the two over you know, the two days after, I always get a notification. I don't know why they wait till when you get to four hundred views, you get an Instagram notification, and most of those things are viewed four to five hundred times over the next few days. Right. So I know it's useful, but it's also when I'm to go back to my previous point. It's when I'm at my most creative. When I'm doing it, when I'm rambling about watching the ducks on the lake or the swans on the canal i have great ideas and it's a little bit of my performance isn't it i'm, I'm performing and and i enjoy that but there you go it's as you say it's useful and 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 by the way amazing that after that first day where you've got you know seven seven viewers half of them are your family you, you keep going yeah. Because you, you could have some you could have said, Oh well no one's interested in this, so I won't bother. But you knew in your heart that it was useful for people and it, it grew and grew and grew. Um so great that it's useful for people and great that it's useful for you. It's, it's exactly that. So I mean, I'm I'm really clear. I always say I'm not doing this for you, I'm doing this for me. Hmm. Um and if you weren't here, I would still be doing it. I just wouldn't be on, on the internet doing it. 
and and, I'm, and I mean that I would be doing it in my garden and and without a camera on me, and that works perfectly. And th- and this sort of starts to take us into you know you're talking about. Uh performance and you know you said you know an introvert who hides in the spotlight which is just an amazing concept uh, that I'd love to talk about as well and brings us into some of your you know you're also uh, an author at least two books that I'm aware of do disrupt and the new one do present yeah and I'd like to just get into a little bit of that if it's okay in terms of you know I I, I work with a lot of people as a coach and a trainer uh, public speaking whether it's getting on a stage or just standing up in front of colleagues, which often can be the worst thing, uh, and yeah. presenting some information is, you know, people would rather slit their wrists, quite frankly, than than do it. And it, it's it's a very profound thing. And I, I don't mean to make light of it by saying that. It's, it's very profound for people. I've had issues around it in the past and I've worked on it. Um, wh- where What have you discovered that's really, that works obviously for you, but also that you can translate, that you can teach to other people? Yeah, so that's a great question. So it, it, I think it is, it's like people's third biggest fear or something, um, with 70% of people absolutely hating the idea of public speaking. Yeah. Um, okay, so what have I found? So I, I wasn't always like this. I used to hate it as well. I used to stumble over my words. I would get really, really sweaty and nervous and make a hash of things. Um, and, and I slowly grew into being able to do this through doing it more, liking myself more. And the key breakthrough um, was not being a character. The key breakthrough was because I, because I could do it as this chirpy, chippy kind of sustainability chap who could make people think, but also make them laugh. Um, but But that was a character. There was no vulnerability there. There was no honesty there was no softness and so um, I added those things which are part of me I let them come out on stage and and I and the other thing I did was I told I gave presentations based on story and they and they're brutally honest um, and I talk about my life you know you, you can't forget your lines when it's when it's your life and I use music I use a lot of 1980s indie a little bit of new romantic stuff, and, I've, and, and, I've, and I play quite, I play quite, quite a lot of, um, of grime as well. And and, I, and each one of those things has there's a point to it. And if I'm talking about sustainability, uh, there's a point to those things. And if I'm talking about innovation, then there's a point there. But it means that people stay engaged, and it means I don't forget what I'm saying because it's my life, and I'm not going to forget what happened in my life. Um, and I, but the key thing was I stopped trying to be somebody else. That's just a that's a killer point. That really is not being this character, this this other person. Because I suppose a lot of us we we grow up. I think especially people in corporate entities, and you probably you're looking at other people right for quite a long time doing the presenting. Oh, I better be like them because that person's you know in the hierarchy more senior than me. They must be better at this, and you start to take on right those character traits of. Of the of the presenter and not yeah. not being the self, yeah, exactly exactly that, and 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 it's done, you know, it's done with, um, you know, it's done with the best like aims in our mind. Um, you know, we we want we, we admire someone, so we want to be more like them. But that person's taken that personality is full; it's gone, and consequently, um, there is nowhere else to go but yourself. And having the confidence in you. That's the thing that I build. So on, on my workshops in my book, my, my book is not really about presenting. My workshops aren't really about presenting. Um, that's one example of what gets better when you mm. learn to know who you are, when you learn to love yourself, all this kind of hippie shit. I'm all over that. Um, but once <laughs> you can look in the mirror and go, yeah, do you know what, you're a good person, then everything gets better, including your ability to present because you stop in trying to be like somebody else. Right. So it, it is this vulnerability. It's also this sense of all the, a lot of the shame we carry around then if we're into Brené Brown territory, um, just letting some of that go and accepting accepting who you are by the sounds of it. That is super important. So, so shame has a really long half-life. Shame is something that will, um, that will sit with you for a very, very long time unless you deal with it. My, one of my favorite phrases is what is not trans 
form is transferred. What, what mm. we don't change, we just pass on. We pass on to an older version of us, or we pass it on to our kids or our staff or our, you know, our team. Um, we pass it on. And, and so being able to say goodbye to the old version of you and be a new version, that isn't a midlife crisis, Richard. That is, that is exactly the way life should be. Um, and, and so going back to my point about, about this friend who then you know, wasn't my friend anymore, that, 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 that's a case in point. They wanted, they didn't like my change and, and they wanted me to be that other person. And on stage, um, if you stop trying to be a character and truly embrace who you are, everything gets better. Got it, got it. And I, look, and, there, and partly the reason we're, we're talking today is the the, uh, the the one time I've actually met you in the flesh was at a, a presentation you gave uh, at one of the Shine events um, in London. Oh, and that was. It was amazing. And look, look, I, I spent 20 odd years in the advertising industry. I've seen my fair share of presentations. I've done a fair few. Uh, I've even trained people how to do it. And then when you stood up, uh, it was like, wow. Just this, uh, the, the energy, the charisma, and, and, and your musical references, I still remember them. Um, there, I think you, you talked about Run the Jewels as well. I mean, one of the yeah. few people who were talking about Run Your Jewels at this time. This is a couple of years ago, I think. I was like, yes, this guy's got it. Um, and yeah. lots of Stone Roses references as well, which uh, absolutely, from a nostalgia point of view, got me. But it was, it's that thing. Uh, it was so memorable because you were enjoying it. The audience were enjoying it. And then that bit you talked about at the beginning, that energy transfer was there. And and wouldn't we all want that? Because I think I think a lot of what stops people when they, you know, they're given the opportunity maybe to do some a presentation of whatever sort is, oh, what could go wrong here? Yes. You know, what's 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 at stake a lot? Or oh, this is a big pitch, or it's to my boss, or whatever. What could go wrong rather than I think I think when you were doing it is what I could, you know, as you said, I might not be feeling great at the beginning, but we'll lift up because you get that energy transfer from the audience, and and that's absolutely what you got. So I just, I just wanted to mention that having having seen you do the do, it's real um, and uh, and and joyful. It and and I, and I love it as well, you know. So so you know, I was again going back to the kind of like lockdown. One of the things I did was the qigong was, you know, and, and what fell out, because I wanted to perform, right? I wanted a, I wanted an audience. Um, not in a, hey, look at me, but in a, I need this to make me feel better. I need this to raise my mojo, right? And um, and that was really great. And the other thing that I thought I'd miss was um, inspiration. That I meeting people that weren't like me, going to events, finding out stuff, and community. And, and the, mm. community, the community thing is really interesting. So... It quickly, Qigong quickly grew. And now I swear no one is doing Qigong. I swear I'm used like a really kind of low rent version of Capital Radio. People put it on and they're busy around their kitchen and then they go on and make comments and they chat. The chat is, it's incessant. <laughs> it's just like, and, and I'm trying to read it thinking it might be something to do with Qigong. No, it's not to do with Qigong at all. They'll be talking about their favourite food or they'll be talking about something that's nothing to do with qigong but is everything to do with life and um yeah. that happens and then i set up on a on a monday i did two things on a monday i did um i did something called monday communion uh, and in the morning between nine and ten i hosted a kind of open zoom chat for about four weeks you just joined in and and if i'm honest it was hard work because people were really scared and i can only say mm. hey have you done some breath work and tried yoga? I can only say that so many times before I'm bored of me. And so I very quickly learned that, I mean, there were 70 <laughs> people on or something the first time. People really craved connection. So, so what I do now is I get, a, I get a speaker. I get, you know, whoever it might be that day. I get someone to come and talk. And, and, and then I ask. It's more of an interview. So because most people don't want to do a presentation yeah. over Zoom. So I'll just say, tell me about yourself. I asked the same three questions. What did your childhood smell like? What did your childhood taste like? And what did your childhood sound like? And, um, and that gets everything off to a really crackly start. Um, Lovely and, questions. And, yeah, they are. They're really good. And people <laughs> love them. And, um, and then we have these conversations that are really open and wide ranging. And we get, it varies. You know, we might get, we might get 70 on there. Um, but we've, I think we're getting 
6,000 watches a week. I can't remember what we're getting. The figures are somewhere on my Instagram. We're getting a lot of people watching every week mm. on, on, on Catch Up On My Reasons To Be, to be Cheerful.co.uk website. Um, and that that community is amazing. And then in the evening, yeah, we had another, uh, not many people. I, I did it for the American audience who maybe couldn't make the morning. But essentially, yeah. there's just seven of us. There's like six blokes and one woman. And we broadly just talk about indie pop. Um, and occasionally <laughs> men's health issues. I don't mean the magazine. I mean the uh, I mean the genuine, gen- genuine. Oh, how's your prostate? Kind of conversations because we're all of a certain age, Richard. Um, yes. and, and, and and that's every Monday evening, and that works really, really well. So yeah, yeah, I managed to create the two things that I thought I would miss. Yeah, and that, and that's uh, it's lovely to hear actually in terms of because we're all missing things, we're all grieving things, aren't we, from the old life that probably isn't going to return as it was, uh, and that, that you can pivot and find new ways of, as for you, getting your energy, getting your mojo th- that you need and being useful and entertaining and helpful to a community, yeah. um, you know, it just feels like a win-win, doesn't it? It's, it, it is brilliant to hear and, and, it's, and it's, it's exactly what I needed to, to do. And, so, and I did it for me, Richard, you know, I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying this was all about. Oh, let me help other people. That's like that. That there was something in there that I knew it would help other people. Hmm. But but I did this for me, and it just so happens that it does help other people. Yeah, yeah. That you know, knowing what you need, uh, I think it's the sort of thing. If I look back, oh, I wish I'd known what I really need to be me. As as you said, your mojo being what being me out of a hundred. If I'd have known that, I don't know, 20, 30 years ago. But there we go. We're, we're back to the, the potential me and not the actual me. So yeah. there's, not, there's not much point dwelling on that too much. <laughs> it, but, and, and, it, and it is, you know, it, it is, it's really interesting how, who we are, where we are in our life, how we look at our progress or our lack of progress, what we even define as progress mm. and, um, and how that's been disrupted or not disrupted. You know, some people have grown enormously. It's, it's really interesting this this whole lockdown COVID thing, those people who I thought would grow, who I thought would lead, they've shrunk. Not all of them. Those people who mm. didn't expect to see anything amazing, they've grown. And it's absolutely fascinating. And it, it, it takes a crisis. There's that great phrase, I can't remember who said it, Roosevelt, I can't remember. Never waste a good crisis. A good crisis. I think most most of those get attributed to Churchill, don't they? He must have had a fantastic uh, soundbite yeah. writer back in the day. Um, but yeah, that that one comes uh, back. And, 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 just, and if we dig into it, it's probably Rumi anyway. Let's be honest. Everything <laughs> else is Rumi. <laughs> exactly. If, if in doubt, start with Rumi. Um, and on that, you know, you've noticed the people you thought would step up haven't. The people you weren't sure about have really come forward. Is there anything that's connecting the dots there for you? And then the correlations the, and the, 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 the whys behind that. That's a, that I hadn't thought. About, that's a great question, and I'm going to I'm going to meditate on that later. I think, I think, I think those that I expected more of, where where they the reason they haven't done as well as I thought they might, is because they've been really self obsessed. They've been really mm. focused on them. And on selling, and on, and on. Um, what's the word? Their ego. They've been really obsessed. Not obsessed. They've been really focused on their ego, and it's it sh- it shows. It really shows mm. that there's that. I feel that they were hiding that before. They could hide that in a business as usual situation, and there is yeah. nowhere to hide in this. That we. It, all of the barriers, all of the wind breaks, all of those things have been stripped away and you can see yeah. people. And it's very exposing you, time. Yeah. And, 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 that, and that egotism, although you would never have said they were like that before, that yeah. egotism is undoubtedly there. And that's been, that's been the fascinating thing for me. And, that's the, and, and those that have done well, they've put themselves last. And they may have done these things like I have for like, you know, it helps me. But, but it actually, they've just given. And, you know, we've all got to eat, right? We've all got to, got to earn a earn yeah. crust. And we, 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 we're doing really well again now. But, you know, we limped through. But we've, we've had these amazing years, and so we, we, we were fine. Um, I think those that gave, I think it's like frying an aubergine. 
right? You cut up an aubergine, you put it in a pan, you put some oil in, all the oil vanishes. You give more oil, the oil vanishes, you give more oil again, and the oil vanishes. And you think, why am I giving so much oil? And then the aubergine begins to brown and the oil comes back out of the aubergine. And this time it's even better because it tastes like a nutty roasted aubergine. And, and I think it's a bit like cooking an aubergine. Those that have put the most oil in the pan will get it out and it will taste better on the way out than it did on the way in. Oh, man. Metaphortastic. That's, I mean, as someone who cooks a lot of aubergines as well, <laughs> that's really working for me. But I, I love that. I seriously love that. Yeah. Put more oil in, even though you can't see necessarily what, what it's doing or where it's going to go yet. You will get your reward. You'll get it back. Ah. That's a great sentiment. That's a great sentiment. So, Mark, I, I know um, we're, we're getting slightly tighter for time. I just wanted to to end with a little sense of looking forward. Obviously, you know, business is getting back on its back to where it needs to be, um, embracing lots of that change. What kind of big ambitions remain for you? You know, you, there's lots going on clearly, but what's next for you? Oh, that's a really great question, and one that I keep avoiding. Um, <laughs> wh- where I've struggled has been in coming out of this towards you know, delivering what I need to deliver for my clients against their timescales. I've really enjoyed the fact that I've not had to do those things for a period. Um, and, and that's been a really interesting lesson for me. I need to develop the part of my business that isn't selling hours. I need to develop the part of my business that is around asset. So I've invested over this period in, a, in mm. two businesses and potentially a third, a little bit of time, a little bit of money, depending on you know, different for different ones. Um, and so I'm going to be growing assets, which is going to allow me to do work for the companies that I sat in that camper van and like they in Margate and when they don't need me anymore, it's going to allow me to approach those with some confidence and say, I, I, I want to work with you and, um, and I can do the first piece, you know, not necessarily for free, but I can, I can spend some time without the fear of, of being poor again. You know, we, poverty is romanced only by fools. It's a dreadful place to be. If mm-hmm. I can earn my money when I'm sleeping, if I can earn my money through something other than my time, then it's going to allow me the luxury of time to work or to approach those companies that I really want to work with and yeah. to finish my Qigong training and to spend more time with my kids. All of my children work for me. And this is a proper family business. Oh, I Every love that. Every one of them works for me. And that. the Reasons to be Cheerful website, which is our side project, could end up being our main project. And if I can bring money in in a way that doesn't involve me having to schlep up and down the motorway or in, in an airplane everywhere, then yeah. I can perhaps help them grow that. Um, with, with with a little bit more um, with, with a little bit more guidance. Yeah, lovely. So just yeah, that opportunity to put even more oil in by the sounds of it um, from from just work, from thinking a bit differently, working differently. Um, that sounds like that's a great aspiration to have. It's and, and 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 it's the only thing that I can you know, that I can do. We don't know what's happening. You know, we're launching a couple. Of, we're launching a couple of pro- really exciting projects between now and Christmas. One of which is like a new a new business brand. One of which is a dreadful word, but I can't tell you what what the product is yet. But we're launching a real physical product between now and Christmas, which will be really exciting. And, oh, wow. and that is allowing me to play. I advise companies all the time. I help companies make more money every single day. Yeah. But I don't, I don't I don't advise me every single day. I'm just on the on the treadmill, running to the next thing. And I'm making sure my diary's full because if my diary's full, then we can all eat. Because you're I'm selling gonna... time. Because exactly. you're selling time. Yeah, yeah. So, what, I mean, this, this is this is often the thing, isn't it? You know how uh, taking your own advice. How's, how's yeah. that been? <laughs> oh, it's hard, man. No one wants to drink their own Kool Aid. It's really, yes. really hard. It's really hard to take your own medicine, and um, and it's but it's been really good. And this the space that I've had to observe and watch and feel has made all the difference. Brilliant. Well, Mark, I, I, I'm 
very very aware of the, of the time but thank you thank you thank you so much for such a wonderful riff of a conversation because honestly i had a few notes written down i've not looked at those at all and we've See, just gone into some fabulous places and i re- i thank you for your time oh no problems thank you what a great thing that you do well thank you very much and uh yeah i'll, I'll be putting uh lots of links into the show notes so people can find out even more about you um so, and, and look out for those new exciting projects that are coming so mark shader thank you so much for joining the mojo podcast today thank you richard have a good day Well, I don't know about you, but I immediately cooked up some aubergine after talking to Mark. I love a powerful metaphor, especially if it's food related. There's a lovely, generous wisdom about Mark. And seriously, if you get the chance to see him present, be there. He's great. Loads of takeouts from this one. No surprises. Uh, Where to start? Um, I mean, I love Mojo being a score of how me I am at any given moment. That really helps with his awareness of what he needs at any given moment and how he's feeling as you know for him as he steps on stage for example and talking about change how we are constantly changing as people and it's great to be aware of this notice it and don't just let others see it as i said sometimes others might not like seeing you change but it's completely natural that you do we are not the same people we were two hours ago let alone two years ago and how he was able to replace what he missed about the old normal in pre-COVID days, taking a different view on community, finding new ways to be himself, a different take on the presenting and performing that he so loves and so needs. And that means he's doing things for him, which is also really important. And he's really honest about that. You know, he'd be doing that Qigong if no one showed up. And it's the fact that 70 or 80 people do live every day. That's great. And that's a win-win and really helps build his community. I could go on, uh, but I'll let you marinate in that wisdom a little bit more. The bottom line here is, the message is very clear, be yourself. As I said, there's loads of uh, links in the show notes for you to find out more about Mark and his interests and businesses. More incredible guests with revealing, inspiring and positive stories coming each week on the Mojo podcast. Next week, we talk about walking away from the best jobs in the world to create the most sustainable drinks brand in the world. That's an absolute cracker. To get a notification when a new episode comes along, do subscribe to the Mojo podcast wherever you find your podcasts. And please do share with friends, leave a five-star rating, and please do write that delicious review on Apple Podcasts. It all really helps the Mojo podcast be more discoverable to more people. So until next time, I really hope your Mojo continues to flow.